Most likely you're here today because you're interested in selling insurance or you're already selling insurance and you've heard that 90% plus of new insurance agents fail out within their first year. And you're wondering what steps do you need to take to give yourself the best chances of survival in selling insurance. What I'm gonna do in this video today is give you some helpful tips as somebody who's been an insurance agent actively in the field since 2011 and has trained more than 3,000 insurance agents since 2013 on what I have personally discovered what it takes to be successful selling insurance. So if you're looking for tips, guidance, and wisdom on giving yourself the best chances of survival and thriving in the business, then stick around. Greetings and salutations. My name is David DuFord. I own DuFord Insurance Group where I train and recruit agents nationally to sell final expense face-to-face -face and over the phone, Medicare, ACA, health insurance, and annuities. If you'd like to learn more about how that works, head over to davidduford.com forward slash FAQ. So what I've got for you today is a compilation of tips and experiences that I've personally had as an agent, as well as training more than 3,000 agents for almost 10 years on what steps you need to take to maximize your chances of success in selling insurance. The vast majority of insurance agents fail. You need to be honest with yourself and you need to take the advice of those people who have been successful so that you can get all of the advantages in your favor to experience the wonder of this business and all that it provides. So let's start with those tips right now. Number one, do your due diligence. This is so critical because most likely you are here because you've stumbled across the insurance business, you know somebody who sells insurance or you were introduced into the sales business of insurance by someone else and it's all kind of this whirlwind of new information. You're not quite sure how to take it. And that's a good thing that you're starting your due diligence by watching this video, but you need to continue that process because all is not what it seems over the entirety of the insurance business. In other words, there's a lot of opportunities to sell insurance out there, but not all opportunities are created equal. And not all opportunities are best suited for every single person that jumps into the business. And unfortunately, many of the insurance agencies out there you're probably talking to operate in some sort of multi-level marketing culture where they mass recruit anybody that can fog a mirror or who has a pulse and isn't necessarily always the best place to start as a new agent. Point being, this business is fraught with difficulty and confusion and what you need to do instead of jumping in right away to the first opportunity presented to you is to slow down, do your due diligence, and see for yourself if an opportunity really is all it's panned out to be. For example, what I think the best first step to take as a new agent or a potential agent is to research and do your due diligence of the different kinds of product and niches that are out there into the market. So for example, if you're brand new, very few agents come in and sell any and all kind of insurance. What most agents do is recognize that it's important to niche down, to select a product or to select a market and focus all of that initial effort as a new agent on that particular strategy. And what niching allows you to do is hyper-focus and learn in more depth the product, the people, the sales process to give yourself that much more higher chance of success in selling insurance. But again, not all insurance products are the same. That's why you need to slow down think about what the options are, investigate them, talk to agents who have had success and failure in the business so that you can more soberly assess which type of market or product is best fit for your personality. The second thing you need to do is once you've figured out what product sounds appealing to you, you need to find an agency that best reflects what your personal goals are in the insurance business. Again, like I said earlier, a lot of agencies are hyper concerned about scaling their agency population and utilize a multi-level marketing strategy strategy to accomplish that. But the problem is a lot of these strategies don't rely on giving the best training, the best support, the best options for products. So it's imperative that you research this out if you're not attracted to that style of doing business to make sure you find out if that's the case that they operate more in the MLM strategy. And if you don't want that to continue to do your due diligence and find those organizations that instead focus on agent developed, they don't care as much about total scale of maximally recruiting anybody with a pulse, but instead care about developing the agent to perform their best and help more people with insurance products. One thing I'll point out is that if you're interested in doing more due diligence, I'd invite you 
to go to davidduford.com and in the menu you'll see a link that says suggest something about a free resource guide if you click that link I put together a lot of different blog posts that I've written over the years on different markets, different niches, different products, and reviews of the most popular agencies. What this is gonna do is give you some much needed insight to which kind of products work and which may be best suited for you, as well as which agencies may or may not be a good fit. So check it out, there's no cost at all. And again, it's at davidduford.com. Step number two, dutifully prepare prior to starting the sales process. So step number one should have taken the most time, the most energy and effort. And once you've found that perfect market and that perfect agency to join, then you need to dutifully prepare and invest all your time and energy learning the craft of selling and marketing for your particular insurance product. You got to understand you can't play softball with learning the craft of selling insurance. This market, this product that you're about to start selling could give you and your family tremendous financial opportunity. You need to take it seriously. You need to invest as much of your time as humanly possible into the onboarding process, rehearsing, memorizing your script, learning your carriers, why you want to pick one carrier over another, understanding how your products work, and understanding how to communicate in a sales fashion to your prospects to get them to buy from you. Again, you cannot shortcut this particular important investment of your time and energy in learning this business because you may never have another chance. There are many agents who cut this short. They don't study as efficiently and as productively as they should. They don't take it as seriously as they should. And guess what happens? they fail out don't be another statistic remember 90 percent of those agents who start tend to fail in their first year so take this seriously spend your effort and your energy in investing into learning how to sell whatever it is you're selling to give yourself the best chances of success number three remember that activity is king so one of the things you have to understand absolutely understand about selling insurance is that activity is king Meaning, even if you're not like the most dynamic, charismatic salesperson, you can overcome that kind of uh, extroversion, if you will, with sheer volume of activity. We have a saying in this business that's absolutely vital and I want you to remember it. There are three things in this business of selling insurance that matter, and it's see the people, see the people, and see the people. In other words, you have to get in front of prospects. It's getting in front of prospects to present whatever kind of product you're selling in the insurance space that is ultimately going to make you in this business or absolutely crush and break you. One pro tip that I would give you is that generally speaking for a full-time agent, you need to conduct 15 completed presentations each and every week in order to give yourself the numbers to have the best chances of success selling insurance. What I've seen is many times in different products, different niches, is that when the total presentation volume weekly is below 15 a week, agents tend to struggle with activity, struggle with getting rejected, struggle with not getting the kind of results that they want. So if there's one thing that you remember, make sure that you complete 15 appointments every single week, no matter what, because doing that, generally speaking, gives you the best odds of success. Tip number four, only buy high quality leads and stay away from the cheap junk leads. So this applies to many of you out there who are getting into this business of selling insurance and you may be selling a product like Final Expense, Medicare, whatever it is, that you probably rely on buying or investing your money into some kind of lead. Take it from me, guys, whenever you invest your money into leads, you get exactly what you pay for. In other words, when you spend and invest a good bit of your money on a more expensive lead, generally speaking, the quality of that lead matches the price of that lead. And the reciprocal is true too. If you refuse to spend the necessary amount of money on the most appropriate leads and instead opt for the cheap stuff, don't be surprised when you get cheap results. This kind of mentality, this stinking thinking, as uh, Art Williams used to say, is results in a lot of agents prematurely failing out of this business quite simply because they didn't properly invest their resources in what would give them the best chances of success. And many times this is because agents are afraid of investing their money because there's a fear of loss. And yes, I get it, but you have to understand if you feel like giving yourself an advantage with quality training or giving yourself an advantage with quality carriers is important, why wouldn't you care about the quality of your leads and giving you the best advantage too? So don't be cheap. Invest in quality leads. Your agency that's 
teaching you how to sell insurance should have good referrals for the quality leads. My advice is to go all in on the best quality that your money can buy if you want to give yourself the best chances of success. Number five, act more and think less. So one of the things about the insurance business that's very unique is that it's a very old style way to sell. There's not a lot of technology involved. It's very much based on generating leads, learning how to set appointments skillfully over the phone, or learning how to door knock your leads skillfully in person, and then getting into the door, then pitching and closing your prospects if you're face to face, or just doing the full presentation, dealing with the initial reactions and objections clients have, and then continuing to close them over the phone. The point is the insurance business doesn't require this high level creativity or thinking. It's actually really boring. The fundamentals really have always been the same in successful sales of insurance. So the cool thing about getting into this business is you don't have to like dream up or concoct some newfangled idea of generating leads or marketing. You simply have to do what has already been proven to work. For example, at DeFord Insurance Group, when a new agent comes aboard to sell final expense or Medicare, we already know what lead systems work. In fact, I don't want my agents worrying about marketing because it, it adds complication to learning the entirety of the business. Whereas if you just outsource the lead gen to a vendor of our uh, recommendation and you instead worry about learning the product, you worry about learning how to sell effectively, your odds of success are that much higher and you've reduced the complication of the business commensurately. Number six, focus on what you're gonna do in the first six months to begin with then the next three to five years. So again, the title of this video is how to survive and thrive in your first year selling insurance. And I think on some level, that means focusing on what you need to do today in the present to maximize your ultimate odds for success. However, there comes a point in this business where how you start starts to change versus how you continue and grow your business. One of the things I teach, for example, when agents join the Ford Insurance Group who start with final expense sales is we eventually six to 12 months in start to integrate Medicare Advantage sales into their mix because that builds a passive stream of income on top of their high first year commissions from final expense sales. And from there, we can extrapolate a three to five year business plan to help them create the potential for a very strong six figure passive income renewal stream insurance based business and really help them achieve their ultimate goal of financial freedom while having a lucrative business behind their backs that pays a passive income for the rest of their life. But before you get to the big picture, you've got to accomplish the day-to-day -day activities of developing your sales presentation. You've got to accomplish the day-to-day -day activities of learning how to market, what to market with, and learning your product. So we, in other words, have to take baby steps first. And once you've established yourself, and you are consistently writing business, that's when you wanna start thinking about what other product can I integrate into the mix to help diversify my income streams. Reciprocally speaking, what you don't wanna do is all of it all at once. Again, like I said earlier, we don't wanna make the simple complicated. And when you try to do too many products at once, what tends to happen is that you overwhelm yourself. Overwhelmed people are confused and confused people never take action. So don't be a confused agent, simplify your life and focus on that one thing before you start to broaden your horizons and pick up other products to sell as well. Tip number seven, fight the urge to complicate, continue to simplify. Again, I think this can be really the overarching big picture perspective that we're trying to push here is the importance of simplification and to avoid complication. My best advice for you guys out there who are about to jump into the insurance business is again, take your time figuring out what you want to be what you want to say yes to, and likewise, what you want to say no to. In other words, you need to focus your efforts to give yourself that best chance of success. And that by itself simplifies the business as much as possible. Whereas again, like I said earlier, you start to take multiple products, it becomes more complicated. And the more complication there is in any kind of sales and marketing system, the less likelihood that you'll have any kind of success that's worth mentioning. So there's my advice on how to succeed in your first year selling insurance. Tell me what you think. If you got any questions about selling insurance, leave your questions in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And I invite you, if you're looking for agency to join, check out mine. It's a national agency. We recruit for final expense, Medicare annuities and ACA. Go to daviddufour.com forward slash FAQ to learn more. And thank you so much for watching. See ya.